Hi, I'm Bob McDemus. I'm the Thermal Spray Guy, and welcome to our introduction to Thermal Spray. This is a short video that's just an overview of Thermal Spray in general. We have more information on www.thermalspraydepot.com. Come visit us. A question I'm often asked is, what is Thermal Spray? And it, when you first see the equipment, it looks like it's pretty complex and the technology can be intimidating. But quite simply, all it is is taking a material, which is a powder or metal, you're melting it, you're going to atomize it, and you spray it. it kind of looks like spraying paint. The difference is we're spraying molten materials instead of paint. Another common question I'm asked is, why does this stuff stick? Well, we have a molten droplet of material. And this material is a metal, an alloy, ceramic, carbide, or some other organic material. The organic materials might be things like plastics or nylon, Teflon, those kinds of things. We take and we atomize this material, these droplets, and propel them using some form of a compressed gas. The droplet hits and splats. Now I know splat, that's a very highly technical term. But anyway, this material splats on the surface of being coated. If it's a round material, it has a tendency to want to kind of go around the radius. If it's a flat material, it just kind of flattens out. And the material sticks because of a mechanical bond on the surface being sprayed. You know, that kind of happens with paint, too. People, you know, often wonder, well, why does paint stick to a material when you spray it on there? Well, it's also a mechanical bond. Thermal spray processes all have three components. You need an energy source, you need a material, the source of material, and you need atomizing gases. The energy source comes from combustible gases, such as acetylene or propane, some other gases like that. And you're going to combine that gas with oxygen and with the flame, those two combine and they create heat and they also create accelerated gases. Another way you can generate the energy is through arc, very similar to welding. I mean, welding uses an arc between a material and, uh, and either a welding electrode or the metal that you're itself, if you use the metal wire feedstock as the electrode. It can be created with a plasma gas, or an actually just plain old velocity is another source of energy. You need a source of material. And the material comes from one of three places with sources. It's either a powder, or it's a wire, or it's a wire filled with a powder. We call that a cord wire. And that's pretty much it. It's one of those three. Now sometimes we have something called a rod, but that really is essentially still a wire. What do we use for atomizing gas? Well, oftentimes it's just compressed air. And we use uh, compressed air to do a couple of things inside a thermal spray gun. One of them is to cool the gun, but the other one is to atomize and spray the uh, molten material. Sometimes we use specialized gases, uh, inert gases, if you don't want to have low o oxidation, etc. And also, uh, the atomizing gas actually might be a uh, byproduct of the combustion. In HVOF, we have the combustion occurring inside the gun, and those expanding gases help to uh, atomize and accelerate the molten particles. You know, thermal spray has various names, and it's picked up various names over the years. Metallizing is one that was often used. Also, spray welding. And uh, that's where people get confused sometimes. They think that thermal spray is welding. And I have a little slide later. We'll talk about that a little bit, comparing the two. Often called plasma spray. The reason for that is uh, back in the 50s, uh, plasma spray process was uh, widely used. And, uh, and so it kind of got the nickname of plasma spray when really it's just really a, a generic term is thermal spray. Also called flame spray. The name kind of generated from the source of the uh, combustion and heat. And rock eye. It's kind of almost like calling it a, uh, a Xerox process. How is thermal spray different from welding? Well, first of all, both welding and thermal spray melt the feedstock. So that's where they're very similar. And they both use a powder, a wire, or a cord wire. And again, they're very similar. Uh, oftentimes, that's why they're so confused. But the big difference is, when you weld, you melt the base material. In a thermal spray, you don't melt the base material. It's, again, just a mechanical bond. Well, that's my overview. And I tell you what, we also are going to have another video following called Thermal Spray System Comparisons. And we're going to basically look at this chart in a little more detail and compare the uh, five major different types of thermal spray systems. 
Although this doesn't cover all systems, this kit covers the uh, vast majority of them. Thanks for joining us, and uh, again, I invite you to take a look at our other videos, and the thermal spray system comparisons would be the next one I'd suggest. Have a great day.